Hi, welcome to ZART PD Online. This is our first Hunter Vasa art activity and we're looking at observational drawing, shape and line. When we look at Hunter Vasa's architecture and his drawings, you'll notice that he does irregular shapes. You can see here the shape's a little bit organic. He uses a free line. His work is not symmetrical. The windows are different shapes. Also the use of colour, he's used a warm palette here and here he has a mixture of warm and cool. Now the reason why we're doing this observational drawing activity is when you get your students to draw a house or a building, they usually revert to the triangle sitting on the rectangle or square. So we want to try to extend these skills and extend them from this comfortable way of drawing. So observational drawing is drawing from life and looking. The opposite is imaginative drawing, which is drawing from your creative mind. And if you ask a child to draw a house, they would go from their creative mind and do the symbols that they already know. So we're going to use different equipment to help get past this. So let's talk about the equipment. In today's activity, we're going to use wooden blocks, a variety of wooden blocks, A3 paper, black pen, and it's optional. You can use watercolour or oil pastels. This first part of the lesson is play-based. So the students are going to be just playing and having fun and relaxing, and you're just going to step back and watch what they can do. To set your table up, this part's a little bit important because it will give your students spatial awareness. The students need to have a white piece of paper in front of them because you want the students to work on a table as a group and build in the centre of the table. Now your first instruction to the students is going to be just make one big building or play with the blocks, not on your white paper, in the middle of the table, sharing the space and working together as a team. You might give an example of putting shapes in front of different shapes. So you might say, you know, make sure you overlap some shapes and build up and fill the space. And then really, you want to stand back and let the children play and, and let them have that, that time to explore and experiment and play all by themselves. And I usually do this by putting on music and taking a step back. So now it's my turn. I'm going to play with the blocks and I'm going to make a city. So I finished building the city and it looks wonderful. There's a lot of different shapes and combinations. You'll find that the students find this really exciting. There'll be a lot of busy chatter and um, I have taken some of the shapes that I've seen my students build and I've put them into my little world. So when students are playing with blocks, even from the, a young age, they, they are in their heads building houses and cities and it doesn't go beyond that. So this is a, a fantastic opportunity to take it that step further. And that's what we're going to do now with the observational drawing. Now, when we're drawing, I use a black marker for the reason that I don't want students to be able to rub out things or worry about their lines. So if they use a marker, once the mark is down, it's down. I want them to look for shapes and look and draw. They don't have to draw the whole scene as is. They might just take that shape and draw it and then look over there and take that shape and draw it. They can do it any way they want. So let them go, let them look. You can move them around. They can start in their seat. You might get them up. You might move the students around and then they get a different view of the blocks. So now it's my job to look and draw, and I can already see some really exciting shapes that I want to draw.
So that's the observational drawing part. Now the first time I ever taught this, um, I was really surprised at the, stu the outcomes of the students and how I can draw three-dimensionally but I didn't know that the students could and some of them could do it by looking. So I have now got a page full of shapes and I've made a village or a world, a dream world. Now this is optional and you might stop the lesson here and just put the drawings up on display as black and white which will look fabulous because it will just focus on the shape and the line or now you can add colour and as we know Hunter Vasa use vivid colours and you can do this using either watercolour or oil pastels, something bright. So I've got some watercolours here. I'm not going to go for the blacks and greys. I'm going to go for the golds and the greens and blues. I'll just give them a spray to get them going. And an aqua brush. You can use a normal brush. This is an aqua brush, which means there's water inside, which helps the students with the flow of water. The, the paint doesn't dry out. And I, I love to use these. And you can just start to add some colour to some of the shapes. When you're using colour, you can always make rules and say warm colours only, cool colours only, or let the students play with all the colours. That's up to you. I'm happy with that now. I'm going to stop because I don't have the need to paint the whole picture. When I do this with my students, I actually keep it black and white because the main part of this lesson is the shape building and the shapes and being able to look and transfer that information onto the paper. And I'm happy with it black and white. Colour is an extension and you can use that as a colour lesson. So you might say warm colours or cool colours, primary colours, secondary. You might give a colour recipe, paint two shapes purple, one shape green, three shapes red. You extend it how you want. So we're going to talk about display now. So I'm just going to clear away the blocks and I'll be back. When I do this activity with my students, I photograph them whilst they're building the city with the blocks and I also photograph them while they're drawing and when I make the display I make a black and white display so I put the work on black paper hang it up on the board but I also put the photographs of the children building and drawing and sometimes a blurb of what they've done so when people are looking at the displays they actually have a real understanding of what's happening. You can also display the work on bright coloured backgrounds and I'm going to just try some now. So I've got a beautiful sheet, cardboard sheets here. So I'm going to try a red one. And that looks fabulous. And I'm going to try a green one. And these bright colours set the work off as well. Or you might want to make an installation of the work. So you might want to take the work and wrap it around a shape. You can make your own cylinder or you might have permanent cylinder shapes in the school or columns or poles. And 
You can also put them on cardboard boxes if you're lacking walls and make your own installation of a building of a building, which would be quite exciting. So there's many ways you can display it. Now, who, who do I teach this class to and how, what happens when I do teach it? I've actually taught this class from lower levels right up to upper. Fear of drawing is less when they're younger. They actually get right into it, they have no fear and they, can, they, they do really, really well when they're doing observational drawing because they've got something in front of them. And as they do get older, they do attempt more the 3D shape when they're younger, they're just looking at the 2D shapes. So any age group can do this. It's just that your outcomes might look a little bit different. And it also gives you a really good gauge of where each individual student is at their observational drawing. It's an exciting class, you'll enjoy it and the kids will love it, I guarantee it.